Hey, and welcome back to another video. So when you're working with SwiftUI, you're probably used to seeing syntax that looks like this. Now you may be wondering, you know, what are these things that look like Twitter handles? Well, these are property wrappers. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can create our own. So by the end of this video, you should be able to understand and build property wrappers that I'm actually showing you on the screen. We'll also look at how we can use property wrappers in Swift UI 2 to build this UI that you can see that validates someone's age using their date of birth as well. So without further ado, if you're interested in learning how to do all of this, let's get straight into this video. Now, before we just dive straight into the code, I think it's really important that we just take a step back and we just try to understand what is a property wrapper. So sometimes you may have code that looks like this extension, which removes snake casing. And well, rather than that being an extension on a string, what about if we just encapsulated this within an actual property itself? And that's where property wrappers come in. They allow us to define how the value of a property in Swift is stored and any extended functionality that we want to allow on it. So I say property wrappers allow you to define how the value in a property wrapper is stored and extend functionality on it. But in a practical sense, Bro, what, what am I even talking about? about? <laughs> let's just break this down with two possible use cases. So let's say you wanna write some code to ensure that someone is over a certain age and format their age fall from their date of birth on the screen. Let's just go with example because that's what we have here in the UK. Well, if we want to validate someone's age based on the outcome of that logic, we can actually change what's stored inside of our property. Well, when you're working with property wrappers, this is where the wrap value comes in. And the wrap value is essentially just the value that's set within the property that you mark with the property wrapper. Now to see this in action, let's actually create a playground where we'll actually look at how we can build our own custom property wrapper. So let's get straight into it. So I've just got a simple Swift playground here that we're going to be using for this example. And you can see that we've got some generated code here. So what we want to do is just delete the variable line. So we still need to import UI kit because we're going to be using some of the things within foundation. Now, in order to actually create our property wrapper, we need to actually use a struct. So from what we said before, we wanted something that validates someone's age. So let's create a struct here and we'll just call it age limit. So this struct name that we've defined here is going to be the name of our property wrapper. Now, right now, this is just a normal struct. It's not anything special. And in order to make this a property wrapper, we need to actually use the at property wrapper annotation. And now we have a property wrapper. So this is the base skeleton. So you'll see here that it's actually complaining that we're not using a property named wrap value, which is fine. We'll get onto that in a second. But what I actually want to do is just define some properties within here. So we said we want to validate someone's age and also as well capture their age as well. So let's create two properties within here. So the first one I want to create is a variable for getting someone's age. So private var age, and this is just going to be a date. And we're going to give this a default of now. So this is what we're going to use to capture the person's date when we use our property wrapper. And the next thing we want to do is apply some kind of limit. Now I'm going to use a limit of 18 because that's what we use here in the UK for most things. So I'm going to create a constant called limit. And it's going to be an integer of 18. Cool. So we're using the age as a date because I want to capture someone's date of birth, you know, the actual date that they were born. I don't want to be working with integers. So the next thing we need to do is actually create some kind of functionality within our property wrapper for handling that validation with someone's date of birth. And this is one of the nice things about property wrappers is that because it's a struct here, we can actually add additional functionality that we only want to lock off within this. So let's create a function here that will actually check to see if you're over our age limit that we've defined within this property wrapper. So I'm going to type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So now within here, we have an is over limit function. And what we're just going to use this for is to basically pass the date in that we set on our property. And we're using the calendar component to basically get the current calendar date now. So we're going to get the date that we pass in up until now. So right now, and then get the difference between them, get the year. And if the year is greater than our limit, then we're going to know that someone is over the age of 18. If they're not, then we know that they're not. 
So that's how we can use the calendar component to basically help us figure out if someone is over an age limit. Now, the next thing I want to do is have some kind of computer property that tells me the default age based on the limit within it. Okay, cool. So we have our default age here and what we're doing is getting the calendar and we're simply just subtracting the limit from the time now. So this will subtract 18 years from now to figure out how old you must be well, the date that you should be born on to basically be over the age of 18. Cool. So we have our logic in place for helping us, you know, figure out if someone's over the age limit and also as well for figuring out what the default age should be based on our limit as well. So now we can actually use and, you know, get rid of this error by implementing the wrap value. And this wrap value is basically where we store the value within our property. So let's just implement this now. So you can either just do insert and then fix, but what I want to do is just type it out to show you, you know, how it should be spelled and discuss some other things. So after here, we're just going to say var, and then it needs to be spelled like this wrapped value like so. Now the type for our wrap value that I want is date because we're going to be working with date of births. So let's just say date. And within our wrap value, we're going to need to give it a getter and a setter because our getter is what we're going to use to get the age from our property. And our setter is what we're going to use to set the age as well. So let's say get. And then in here, we simply just want to return the age that, you know, you've set within the property. Now our setter is a bit different. So this is where the match is going to happen. So within our set, this is where we're going to assign the value to our property, depending on whether someone is over the age limit or not. So what we want to do here is we actually want to type out age is equal to, and then we're going to say is over limit. So if someone is over the limit, we actually want to basically set that to the new value that someone's assigned to this property. But how do we get a new value? Well, luckily there's something called new value. This is the new value that's been set within the property that we use this property wrapper on. So now what we want to say here is we're going to use a ternary operator. So if someone is over the age limit, then we're going to assign the new value to our age variable or else we're going to use our default age here. So this will basically default it to our limit that we calculate here. Now, how can we actually use our property wrapper within our code? Well, let's just create a struct and we'll call this user and within user, we'll just have a age for now. And like so. So if I want to use this property wrapper within our struct or on a property, all I need to do is to simply annotate that property here like so. So age limit. Now, one thing to note as well is that I've said age is a date and also as well with our property wrapper, the wrap value is also returning some kind of date. So you need to make sure that they're both the same. So let's actually see this in action. Now let's create a new user like so. And we'll make it actually a var because we want to mutate it. And now that our new user has been created, what we want to do is just simply just print out their age like so cool so let's just see what happens so let's just run this so you'll see the date that's being printed out for this is actually the date right now so what's actually happening here because we actually said here in our setter that if someone is over the age limit so if they're over the age of 18 then we should basically set that value to the you know new value or use the default age so if our default value in our date is right now we're not over the age limit so this should actually be 18 years from now which i'm not going to do the maths on because i ain't that great at maths <laughs> but what i will say is that something's not working here and our setter is not being triggered and the reason the problem that we have here is basically when we initialize our user we actually don't set a value so we don't ever trigger this setter here so in order to actually see this showing the correct date which should be 18 years from now what we need to do is on our user we need to create some kind of initializer to set our age so let's do that now and i'm just going to give this a default value so i don't always have to enter in an age or always set it to now if i just leave it empty so let's just say self 
dot age is equal to age like so cool so let's actually just run this now and see what happens if we still get 2022 okay cool so let's run this and now you'll see that this looks correct because this is 2004 because if we were born right now we're not over the age of 18 so this is now giving me the dob for a valid age from our limiter so that's correct so what about if i was actually to you know to set it to like my birthday so let's actually just change our user so we're going to say user.age and then we're going to pass it a date this time with a time interval since 1970. Now this number I'm about to type in now is not a number that I remember off by heart. It's something I have in my notes. So I'll just copy this over now. Cool. And if you want to find out what your date of birth is, you know, in a time interval since 1970, you can just simply just Google it on the, you know, the internet. And if you want to find out your date of birth, all you need to do is if you just Google date time interval calculator, you know, like 1970, you'll see a whole bunch of them here. So if I was just to like click on this one, for example, if I put my date of birth in here, so if I just say, so 27, So now you all know my birthday, so you can't forget giving me a birthday present. <laughs> and I just say here, uh, so this is month, oh, so this is the American way around. Okay, so if I just do 10, 27, and then now I can see, you know, a timestamp of my um, date of birth. I'm not gonna bother about the time, but if we just do the date, we can just copy this in. And now we can create an instance of the time interval since 1970 and just, you know, just paste that in if we wanted to. So yeah, you could just do that if you want to figure out what yours is, if you're interested. So now if we actually just print out the user.age and I just run this again. So this is just playgrounds playing funny. So let's just stop that here and then just run this again. So you should see now that it prints out my date of birth, you know, because of the time interval that I passed in. So now this is working exactly how we want it to be. So if you're someone who's under the age of 18, you'll just get the default age or else if you're over 18 like me, you'll get your actual date of birth. So this is exactly what we want. So let's just scroll up. So let's just look at our example here. And what about if I actually want to extend functionality on this? So the problem that I've got now is that this only returns a date i don't want to have to write an extension on date when i just want to put all of my like functionality within an age limit so how would i do that well that's the whole point of a projected value so the projected value allows us to actually extend functionality on our property wrappers so what i want to do now is that rather than just displaying the date here like you know a date object i actually want to format the way that the date is displayed on you know in the console so i want to say how many years old i am and also tell me if i'm over the age limit via you know some kind of boolean so what we're going to do now is actually create our projected value so we can actually extend functionality within our property wrapper so let's do that now so similar to the wrap value, when you're working with projective value, you need to name it the exact same way. So on our property wrapper here, after our wrap value, I'm just going to say var projected value. Now this projected value doesn't have to be the same type as your wrapped value. This can actually be any type that you want because you're extending functionality. So in our case, because I just want this to return whether someone's over the age limit, I'm going to make this a bool. And then I'm just going to simply call our function is over age limit and pass in our age as well. So now if I was to scroll down after here, we can now just print this out. So I'm going to say print and then we're going to say user dot. And you'll see that I actually have two options here. So I actually have age, which is a date. But if I actually go down to the next option, I actually have a dollar sign. So this dollar sign is how you access the projected value within a property wrapper. So this is how you access your extended functionality. So if we just hit enter, you'll now see we got dollar sign age. And I'm just going to copy this and just print it here. So let's just run this and see what happens. So what should happen is the first one should be false. And the second one should be true. So let's just run this. And you can see here, that's exactly what we get. So the first one is false because we're not over the age limit. And the second one is true. So looking at this, I think we actually have two problems. So the first problem is, is this only returns to me whether we're over the age limit. It's not actually, you know, telling me any other additional information like being able to get the formatted age. 
And another thing as well is the API design of it. So from an API design perspective, this here isn't clear to me that it returns, you know, some kind of Boolean to tell me whether someone is valid or not. It just says dollar sign age, which doesn't make sense. So instead of us doing this, how about if we actually create some functionality that encapsulates this logic and use our projected value to return that. So let's just scroll up to the top here. And what I'm actually going to do is refactor our property wrapper. So I'm going to extract out our validation for our age and create an object as well for formatting our age as well. So let's do that now at the top here. So I'm just going to create a struct called age validator. And within this struct, we're just going to copy over some things from our property wrapper. So the first thing we want is our limit. And rather than this being a let, I'm just gonna say private set var. And I'm also going to create an initializer for later so we can change the limit if we want to. And because we're using this, we don't need to set the value like so. So we're just going to say self dot limit is equal to limit like so. And now what we're going to do is just copy over our function with our is over limit. So we're just going to cut this and paste it below here. So now we have our object for validating someone's age. So just the age validator. Now the next thing we want is a, you know, object for helping us format our age. So let's just create a new struct called age formatter. And what we're going to do is just have a function that simply does formats someone's age from their date of birth. So we're going to say from D or B date. And then this is going to return a string because we want it to be like 18 years or 24 years or whatever it may be. So in order for us to do that, we simply just want to copy our function here. We're going to copy this. And then we're just going to say let years store it in there. And then we're just going to simply return a string where it's like years and then this will be years like so cool. So we'll also say from DOB like so cool. So this is going to get the year from the date of birth that we pass in up until right now. And then we access that year and then we simply just use some string interpolation to just format it into a string the way that we want pretty straightforward. So now our age limit property wrapper right now is um, struggling because we've <laughs> we basically tore it apart. So we're going to need to clean this up with a few things. So the first thing we don't need anymore is this limit. So we can take out the limit. And the next thing we're going to need to do is actually create an instance of our validator and our formatter within this property wrapper. So let's do that now. So just create a bit of space. And then here we're just going to say private let validator is equal to age validator like so. And I'm not going to create an initializer with a limit just yet. We'll look at that in, an, in the next part of this video. And then let's just use our formatter like so. Is equal to age formatter. Okay, cool. Sweet. So now we have our logic for, you know, handling our business logic in here. So our age here is fine. That's all right. But we need to do a bit of refactoring, like I said before. So what we want to do now is we want to use our validator dot is over the limit. So our is over the limit is private. So we don't want this to be private. So let's just take this out and then we'll just make it internal. So now it's exposed. And then our projected value, we want our validator dot is over the limit for our age here as well. And our default age here should be fine as well. So within our default age here, we want this to be our validator dot limit like so. Okay, cool. So now we've got our validator. And one thing, if you missed that, 
if you did miss that because maybe I went a bit too quick is that our function here on our is over limit is not private anymore because we need it to be internal so we can access it within our property wrapper. So make sure that this isn't marked as private. So basically none of the functions in here should be private. So within our age limit, what we want to do now is we need to change our projected value because right now it's just dollar sign age. It's not really clear in terms of what it is that we're trying to access and do. So I personally don't want to create a brand new struct just for this. So what we can do is use something called a tuple. So on our projected value, we're just going to use the parentheses and think of a tuple as like a temporary struct where you can have like a temporary object that you can return with parameters. So within here, we're going to have two parameters. So the first parameter we're going to have is the formatted age. So I'm just going to call this formatted and it's going to be string. So the benefits of me calling that format is that if I do dollar sign age dot formatted, that makes more sense. And then the next thing we're going to do here is, is over. And that's going to be of type Boolean. So now when we use this, it will make more sense because it'll be dollar sign age dot formatted dollar sign age dot is over, which makes more sense from an API design standpoint. So now we've got a problem because this is saying that we're returning a Boolean, but it actually expects it to be this, which is fine. Now I could do all of this in one line, but it might look a bit confusing. So instead of me doing that, I'm actually going to break this up onto multiple lines. So the first one we want is, is over limit. I'm going to store that in a constant. And then after this, we're going to do let formatted age like so. And for this, we're going to use our formatter dot format from age like so. And then now what we want to do is return our tuple in order to return a tuple. You just need it to basically match the signature that you've defined here. So we're just going to say formatted. Oh, trigger fingers. So formatted and then for our formatted property here, we just want to pass in our formatted age. And then for our is over, we want to pass in our is over limit. So now just return our tuple. Cool. So how can we actually use this with what we define down below? Well, if we scroll down now with our age, it's actually now, this is actually now a tuple. So if I actually click on this, oh, Exacode isn't smart enough, man, but this is a tuple. But what I can do now is I can say dollar sign age dot is over, which makes more sense. I can also say dollar sign age dot formatted age dot formatted, which is a lot clearer compared to before. So let's just see if this works. So I'm going to print this out. Uh, so we'll just run this again. And now you'll see that it says false 18 years and 28 and true as well. So this is working exactly like what we wanted. And it also reads a whole lot clearer. So if we just stop this and just run it one more time. So I hit stop in the bottom there and then run you'll see I get the exact same result. So this is working exactly how we want it to. So now we created our property wrapper. How will we use something like this in SwiftUI? So what we're going to do now is actually just jump into a new SwiftUI project and see how we can use this within a SwiftUI context. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So now we're within our SwiftUI project and you can see it's just an empty SwiftUI project for now. I've not actually copied anything over, but what I do want you to do is if you just scroll up into the playground that you had before, I basically just want you to copy everything from before we, you know, initialize our user. So let's just copy all of this code here. And I know it's dirty, but just for this tutorial, we're just going to paste it within this file here. You know, what you could do is just create a new file called age property wrapper. If you want to, it's up to you. But for this tutorial, we're just going to put it all within one file. So we can just work with it easily. All right, cool. So I'm just going to expand this to get a bit more space. All right. So what I want to do now is I actually want to bind our, you know, users age within our view here to some kind of like property, um, you know, the property wrapper that we created before. So our age. So within our content view, let's actually just create a new user. And the first thing I want to do is I actually want to create a date limit for actually choosing, you know, your date of birth. So let's just delete the code that we have here. And instead of this being empty, we're just going to say date picker. And if you want to learn more about date pickers, I actually do have a video on my channel, which I'll link 
at the top of the card here and you should see on the screen pop up as well. And the date picker option that I want to use is the option with the display components. So if we just say display, so if we just type out like we're spelling out display components and then hit enter. And then for our selection, this is just going to be user dot age. Now for our display components, this is just going to display the date because we don't want the date and time. We just want someone's date. And I actually don't want this label option here. So I'm just going to delete this. And instead at the start here, just use an empty string. So we just have an empty label like so. And then on our date picker, we're just going to say dot labels hidden to hide any labels that might try to display on the screen. And bloody hell, <laughs> what we I forgot to do was mark this with the state property wrapper. So let's mark this with the state copy wrapper. Right, cool. So now this should work. So now as you see here at the top of the screen is that we actually have our user and we have a date picker that we can now interact with. Sweet. So what I want to do is I want to basically have it where it shows your, the format and age on the screen here. And it also shows some kind of like SF symbol icon to tell you whether you're over the age limit or not. So above our date picker, let's just create an image and we're going to use the system name initializer here. Now there's two SF symbols that I want to use and that's the X mark and the um, tick. So depending on the user's, you know, age, if they're over the limit, we're going to change what SF symbol you see on the screen here. So what we're going to say here is user dot age. And now if you look at this now, we're actually able to access our projected value with our tuple. So I actually want to access the projected value to get that extended functionality. And the op property that we want to use is, is over. So if it is over, we're going to show one SF symbol and another one. So the first FS symbol here is going to be check mark. And then the second SF symbol here is going to be an X mark. And if you want to learn more about SS symbols, again, you'll never guess it. I've got another video on my channel. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is change our symbol variants. So we're going to say symbol variants, and this just allows us to change the way our SS symbol looks. So we can add like a circle and we can also make it filled and whatnot. So I'm going to say dot circle dot fill. And now you'll see that our SF symbol is more filled in. And I actually want to increase the, you know, the size of this. So we're going to say font and then we're just going to say large title like so. And then I also want to change the color of it as well. So in order to change the color of it, we can just say symbol. We'll just, we'll just group all the symbol styling. So we'll say symbol rendering mode and we'll just say dot multi color. So this will give me a color version of that SF symbol as you can see. And let's just add a bit more padding around it so it has more spacing. So I'm just going to say padding of 15. Right, cool. So now it's got padding all around it of 15. So this looks how I want it to look. So you can see here initially already straight away, yeah, that because it thinks that we're 18 years old, it's actually a X mark, which is correct because we're not over the age of 18. We are 18. So it's not 18 and over. You have to be over 18. So the next thing here that we want to do is we actually want to also add in a label to display the age that we want as well. So what we're going to do here is create a text and we're simply just going to say user dot age to access the projected value dot formatted. So now we can see the age on the screen here as well. Cool. So if we actually wanted to, you know, test this out, if I was to just select my date of birth again, so we're just going to go to 94 October and then we'll just choose the 27th and then click off it. You'll now see that I actually have a tick mark here because I, you know, I'm over the age of 18 and yes, I'm 28 years old, man. I'm getting old, old man. So, <laughs> so we didn't have to do anything at all. All we had to just simply do is just like use our wrapped and our projected value to access, you know, for setting our value. So we use our wrapped value here for setting it on our age with our property wrapper. And then to get our extended functionality, we simply just had to use the dollar symbol, you know, before our, you know, for our projected value. So 
we don't have to do anything here at all when we're working with our okay cool so what about if i actually want to change the limit so i actually don't want this limit to always be 18 by default what about if i want it to be 16 so you have to be over the age of 16 to you know use whatever this may be so what we can do if we wanted to is we actually can give our property wrappers an initializer so in here if you remember for our validator we gave our limit a you know initializer where by default it's 18 but what i could do if i wanted to is actually pass in my own custom age limit so in order to do that all we need to do is just simply give our age limit property wrapper some kind of initializer so let's do that now so we're just going to say in it and then this time for our initializer we don't want it to be age we actually want this to be a limit and we're going to make an integer and by default we're just going to set this to 18. so let's just change our validator this time so we don't want to initialize it in line here we actually just want it to be something we initialize within the property wrapper so let's just delete this and now we just say the type so here we can say self dot validator is equal to age validator and for our age validator, we're just going to pass in some kind of limit like so. So because we already set the limit here as a default, oh, let's just delete that. So because we already set this as a limit here as a default on our, you know, property wrapper, we actually don't need that um, default anymore within our age limit. So let's just remove this here. And we'll just make it of type integer like so. So now, by default, when you use a property wrapper, it will be 18 years old. But what I can do is if we just scroll down to our model, so for our user, I can actually say here, limit. And now I can set the limit to something like 16. Cool. So if we just look at our screen here for our SwiftUI preview, you'll now notice that it's actually changed here to be 16 years old. So if I actually change the date and if I go up to a, you know, I'm just gonna say February and we'll just say 1989, you'll see that we get our tick. But if I was to go all the way back, well, not back, but into the future, and we'll just say 2028, this is now wrong. So you can see how we can actually extend functionality using projected values. And we can also set default values and actually pass in our own values via the initializer. So one more thing that, you know, I didn't actually mention, but I hope you picked up and noticed is that all of the property wrappers that I created have never been a constant. So you actually can't use property wrappers on a constant. You can't actually use property wrappers on a constant. And the reason why is because you can't change a value on a constant once it's set it's set so that's why you have to use a variable so you may be wondering now like when would i actually want to use a property wrapper well for me personally i think they're great syntactic sugar and also as well they're really good at encapsulating logic within a struct so that's where i find them really useful so it's really good if you want to move away from extensions and now just start to you know add in property wrappers to make your code look you know nicer in my opinion now there's also as well they're also really good as well if you use them with generics now i'm not gonna go through that in this video but it's a great article by antoine shout outs to you who actually goes into how you can use property wrappers with generics with user defaults if that's something that you're interested in and i actually leave a link in the description box and you should see on the screen now and i hope you learned something new so if you actually enjoy my teaching style i actually do have more courses on my website which you should see on the screen now that you should go and check out and also as well if you want to support me i also have a youtube membership so i can actually continue to do more videos like this so you can help it out and also as well you get some cool badges and emojis exclusive just for you that you can put in the comment section so i know you're part of the ride or die gang <laughs> So if you also want to donate as well, I actually do have, obviously, you know, there's a YouTube donate button here and there's also, you can buy me a coffee as well, which is a link in my description box. Now, if you don't want to donate any monetary value, that is, you know, that's fine. It's up to you, but you can actually help me out for free. You can do that by sharing this video, commenting, liking as well as subscribing to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. So that's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.